the problem in dealing with science and trying to get science to take us seriously, take the Bigfoot community seriously, take the subject of Bigfoot, or, or any hominoid, not just Bigfoot, any hominoid at all, seriously, because the hobbit of Indonesia is a type of hominoid. To get them to appreciate that there's a larger picture, much less that there's just a very narrow picture focused on Bigfoot Sasquatch, but to get them to see and understand that there's a larger picture is really difficult because that's information they don't want on the table of discussion because what it means downrange is so terrible for them. That's really the problem. If you could, if you could show them absolute incon incontrovertible proof that hominoids were real, they still would do everything they could to avoid acknowledging and accepting it because when it has to be accepted, whenever that day comes, and that day will come because these things are real, but when that day comes that they have to accept it, what it means is that the so-called pre-humans of the anthropological record, of the, arth ar excuse me, of the archaeological record, um, will be proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that the prehumans, what are called the prehumans, this is the Australopithecines, all the early homos, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, right through Neanderthal, that all of those creatures are not humans, have nothing to do with humans, never had anything to do with humans. They belong to the family of hominoids, that they are the ancestors of today's living hominoids. When, when science has to acknowledge that grim fact that everything they call prehuman has nothing to do with humans, then humans, we lose our place in the flow chart of life on Earth as we understand it today. And when we lose our place on the flow chart, the first question that will be asked of science is, how do you explain humanity being here when there's no trace of us in the fossil record until 120,000 years ago. That will force science to have to look for plausible answers and the only plausible answer right now is out there already through the work of, of the interventionists like myself, intervention theory, and what we have on hand is an array of facts that make it very clear that human beings are an add-on to this planet and a recent add-on to this planet, a genetically engineered species that has been put here. Now, when science has to confront that issue, it's not just a matter of science having to confront it, it's religion having to confront it as well. There are a number of sacred cows that are going to get gored by the reality of hominoids. So you and I or anyone can talk to a scientist and convince them that there's something here. But what they don't want to hear is, the, what they don't want to deal with or accept or confront is what it means downrange for their reality. And when they understand that, and many of them do, don't, don't think that because I'm sitting here talking about this, I'm the only person in the world that's aware of these things. I'm not. I'm one of the few people that's talking about it openly and out front. And, and in fact, I may be the only one, so far as I know, talking about the larger picture to the extent that I do. But nonetheless, what I'm saying is true and correct and real and right. And time will show that. And time will, will I think, work completely against the position of science, all science today, including Darwinian evolution, and that hominoids are the, the spear point, I think, that will that will cause it all to change over time. The, the other possibility that would be equally dramatic would be if a UFO landed on the White House lawn. I don't think that is likely to happen. I do think it's very likely that a hominoid will be captured or killed or run over by a semi or something will happen to, to ensure hominoid reality. Now, the first one, the first one, science will be able to maybe fend that off 
for a time confronting the reality of what that means. They can call it a freak of nature. They can, they can do all kinds of contortions to try to avoid facing up. But once it'll be like the panda, once they, they can't deny that it's there, people are going to start funding searches and more will be found. And as more are found and as the, the grim reality has to be confronted, that these things, not only are they the ancestors of, of excuse me, the descendants of the prehumans, but they have a genealogical record going back, an anthropological record, a fossil record going back 20 million years into the Miocene and the Miocene apes. And when, you, when that connection has to be confronted, that there's a 20 million year history of these creatures on Earth, the hominoids, that can be clocked that far back, stem to stern from then to now, today, absolutely humans are off the flow chart, as I said earlier, and it's just simply going to be terrible for science when that day comes.